Is the ritual ready? Yes, sir. The blood altar is prepared. Good. Let us proceed with the summoning. By mortal class and twisted method, accept our blood, our offered effort. In time of need, when light absconds, I call the one from deep beyond. Caelius Physicus, Caelius Physicus, Caelius Physicus! Physicus. So, Kyle's back, and he comes bearing gifts. I'm a little late on covering this because of the uh, depressive non-productiveness, but I'm here now. Last time we checked in with the mod man's work, he'd done something previously thought literally impossible, the creation of custom Gungeoneers. This time, he's gone a step beyond into creating an easy-to-use interface for creating custom combat rooms. That's right, Gungeon Level Editor, Super Gungeon Maker, the Perpetual Gungeoneering Initiative. Uh, other famous level editors, I guess. The point is that I can place a table and a bat and boom, it's in the gungeon. Also this, this is possible, and it makes me very happy. I'm going to walk you through the installation and interface and show you how to make your very own rooms and enter the gungeon. Uh, disclaimer, you will be needing Mod the Gungeon to make this work. Mod the Gungeon is what's required to make basically every mod work. There are videos out there on how to install that and get it working, including from yours truly. I'll be putting a link to Retromation's tutorial in the description, because he sounds more happy installing software than I'll ever be in my whole life, and I will cherish his joy as if it were my own. Hello, Hello everybody! everybody. Uh, another disclaimer, this tutorial goes quite in-depth because I want to eliminate as much confusion and answer as many potential questions as possible. Sorry. The first thing you need to do is to go to this page on the Mod Workshop, I'll put a link in the description. This Files tab here is where we'll be getting all our stuff from. This is the mod that actually lets the game recognize and load rooms, and this is the tool that allows us to make them. I'm going to be downloading them both, however if you only want to play other people's rooms and not make your own, you only need the bottom one. But let's get them both. Come on, custom rooms, any day now. You can do it. I believe in you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um. Oh, who's a good boy? I knew you could do it in the end. Let's just drag these suckers onto the desktop. It's messy, I know. Be quiet. I'm my own man. I can do what I want. Now, you might notice that these files have the same names once downloaded, because Mod Workshop was made by chimps dancing on a keyboard, but that's fine, we can just open them up and get what we need. We want the one that says Room Architect Tool, not whatever this is. Let's just put this under the desktop. Any day now. This is what's going to actually allow us to make the rooms. Bada bing, bada boom, and there she is. Fresh as new. Fresh as new? That's an expression. Definitely. Uh, leaving this for now, we will delete its parents and turn our attention to this file. This one needs to be installed like a regular mod. If you've installed Mod the Gungeon and run it once, there should be a little folder in your Enter the Gungeon directory called Mods. Now mine's already full of stuff because I am a mod whore, but uh, we just want to drag that in there. It's also very important that we delete mods.txt. Remember, you don't need to unzip this one. There are some frequently asked questions I should address. Mods cannot be installed on consoles, mods cannot be installed on Mac, and if you got Gungeon on the Epic Games Store... Uh, my condolences. I don't actually know whether or not you can mod that version, but, but I felt the need to say that anyways. Running the game once with this file in your mods should create a new folder in this directory here, the main Gungeon Steam files and that directory should be called Custom Room Data. Come on, any day now. Oh, there it was! It happened while I wasn't even looking at the screen. Strangely enough, I was looking at the clock because it decided to take forever. Okay, so now we can just kill the game again. This Custom Room Data folder is where you'll drag rooms when you want the game to load them. 
If all you want to do is play other people's rooms, then this is pretty much all you need. Here, I'll even demonstrate with the, uh, room pack of one Navan Nemed. I don't know who he is. He sounds potentially dangerous. Uh... Bada bing, bada boom. When that's all done, those rooms will now be fully loadable. And that's really all there is to installing the rooms themselves. This is how you'll add your own rooms as well if you make them. Which brings me neatly on to... We'll need to go back to this file that we ruthlessly orphaned on the desktop earlier. Inside is the program that we'll need for making rooms. Rat.exe Never known from the future here. This video was recorded in an older version of the editor than what's currently out, and currently probably will be out when this video goes live. So I'm just going to pop in with these extra amended recordings, uh, just to explain things that may have changed, and that might be different in your version. Um, that might make things a bit more confusing, but it beats having to re-record the whole thing. When you run it for the first time, you might get a little warning like this. Don't worry about this, this is just part of Kyle's plot to take over the world, it's nothing serious. For now, we just want a new room. And I'm going to full screen this, because I'm not a Neanderthal. It'll ask us for the X and Y dimensions in a little tick box called Draw Border. The dimensions are just how big we want our canvas to be. I usually pick something stupidly large, like 100 by 100, because we can easily trim it down later. As for Draw Border, that auto-generates room tiles around the outside of our entire canvas, basically making the whole thing one giant square. I personally never do this, because if I did, and I wanted to trim it down later, I'd need to manually delete all of those rooms, and it's horrible doing that. So let's go. This is our workspace. We have three tools, Draw, Erase, and Fill. We can also toggle a grid up here in the Edit menu if that's what you fancy. I personally don't like using the grid, but it could make it easier for you, who knows. We also have four types of objects that we can place. Environment, which is stuff like walls, floor tiles, and pits. Exits, which is the exits and entrances to the room, where the game can place corridors, basically. Enemies, which is pretty self-explanatory. And placeables, which includes uh, cursed pots, regular pots, shrines, traps, chests, NPCs, tables, barrels, more decorative objects. It's just full of stuff, basically. It's full of everything else that uh, wasn't suitable for the other categories. <laughs> to teach you the basics, I'm going to go through the process of creating a simple room for the hollow. It's going to be... Oh, that's the fill tool! It's going to be decently sized, and it's going to have some bulletkin and some skulllets in it. Let's go. First, we're going to draw a large shape using the wall tool. I'm going to make it slightly boxy, but not too much so, to sort of fit with the hollows sort of catacomby theme. Uh, now, if you're wondering about all these brilliant variations I'm putting on the walls, you know, like, what's what might be the artistic integrity behind this little nook here? There is none. My hands just shake like a crack addict. Now, you don't want to make this shape too small because, well, the player's trying not to get shot in it. But you also don't want to make the room too big because, well, otherwise they're just going for a brisk jog. Once the room is all nice and sealed, I'll use the fill tool to add in a floor. And, well, I guess we'll add some pits here and there, you know, just to show you how they work. That one there. And one here with more wonderful, artistic, amazing... No, that was the filter! <laughs> Okie dokie. Now that our room's architecture's done, we want to place some exits around the border of the room. Remember, the arrows on the doors should always be facing outwards. Because, you know, they're exits, they point out. They point exit, exity in, in the exit direction. It sounds a little silly to reiterate that so hard, but that's actually one of the most common reasons people can't get their rooms to work, is because they put their doors around the wrong way. I even still do it sometimes, and I'm not proud of it. But, yeah. It can cause your room to not load if you mess that up. So yeah, just place a handful here and there. This should be about enough for this room. 
You typically want to place two at the absolute minimum so that the game can find a way to pass through the room, otherwise it'll probably have difficulties loading it in-game. Next is enemies. Now this is the fun part uh, for, for me, not for my players. You have a huge collection of enemies at your disposal, including bosses. Uh, disclaimer, do not use bosses unless you are very, very aware of what you are doing and are willing to rigorously test it. I have made hundreds of rooms and I have only used bosses in two of them. And those bosses were fairly early game bosses as well. Bosses can be used as, you know, enemies on later floors. For example, I have made a room that uses three trigger twins. However, they are strong. They do have a damage cap even when they are not in boss rooms. So be very, very careful to make sure your room is fair if you do that. What we're going to do is place a, a wave of normal bullet kin. Place around six or seven. That should do for a first wave. Next, we'll follow it up with three gummies on a second phase. To add a new wave of enemies, we've simply got to click this little plus icon up here by this wave box. As you've seen, this makes the first wave of enemies sort of, you know, uh, translucent, so that you can still sort of see where they are, but they're clearly not part of this wave. We will add our three gummies here. So, now those three gummies will only spawn once all the other enemies in the room are killed. You may notice that waves start counting at zero. So, zero is the enemies that are there when you start the room, one is the second wave, the reinforcements, two would be a third wave, and so on and so forth. You can theoretically place as many waves as you like, but um, don't do that. Doing that makes people send hitmen after you. Now that our enemies are in place, we want to move on to placeables. I'm going to be using some stone tables, some coffins, and some decorative rocks. So I'll just add them in now. You typically want to place tables where there'll be a tactical advantage for the player. I'm gonna say around like here, maybe. Would be co I, I just play it by ear on these things, you know. And, uh, that's probably a bad place. Remember, the player can dodge over tables. So yeah, that'll be our table setup. Now, now I'll just s squirt out some rocks, I guess. To make it look like it's some sort of catacomb or chasm. And boom, we're almost done. We've successfully made a room, but the game doesn't know what it's for yet. It doesn't know what floor it's meant to be on, what type of room it is, and how rare it's meant to be. We do this up under here in the room menu, in properties. Here we can select what floors we want it to appear on by ticking tick boxes in the chambers section. We only want it to appear on the hollow, but if we ticked all of these, it would be a potential room that could show up in every single floor that we ticked. So let's say, for example, you wanted to make a room appear on the hollow and the forge, you would just tick them both. If you wanted to make a room appear on all floors, you'd just tick every single box. Uh, also a fair disclaimer, the rat den and the RNG department don't use proper dungeon code, I guess, to put it simply. They're not like other floors. So currently you cannot add rooms to the rat den or RNG department. If you set rooms to those floors, they just won't show up. It's a shame, but it's a technical limitation right now. Next, we want to set our metadata, the first option of which is selection weight. This is how rare the room is. By default, it's 1.5, which is slightly more common than normal rooms. The higher the number, the more common it is. A room with 1000 rarity, for example, will almost always appear at least once. For rooms that are intended to be uncommon, I'd recommend setting it to around uh, 0.7 or something. For very rare rooms, you'd probably want to set it somewhere around 0.4. And for ultra, super, mega, once in a lifetime rooms, you'd set it to around 0.2. I'm just gonna leave it at 1.5, however. Finally, the category and subcategory. These tell the game what type of room our room is. By default, it's set to the correct category, which is normal in the subcategory of combat. That means the game will pick this when it's trying to find combat rooms for the hollow. The other subcategory of normal is trap, meaning this will appear as a trap room. In total, the categories are normal, which we just looked at, 
Special, which contains shops and stuff. Reward, which is chest rooms. Boss, which is boss rooms, which don't work yet in the editor. Don't try and make boss rooms now because th they don't work yet. Connector and Hub, which are like the normal category but special. Secret, which is secret rooms. And Entrance and Exit, which are the elevator rooms, which also do not yet function in the editor because Gungeon Code was written on stone tablets and uses light reflected off the surface of Mars to function. As I said before, we just need normal combat. Oh, and as for an explanation of Hub and Connector rooms, these are highly similar to normal rooms, even having the same subcategories of combat and trap. They're used during floor generation to really connect the floor together. Hubs tend to be large rooms with a lot of different entrances and exits that the map likes to branch off around, and connectors are basically that but smaller. There's nothing wrong with setting your room as a hub or connector if it has the right amount of entrances and exits to get the job done. But just know that by virtue of doing this, your room will appear a lot more commonly, since floors typically have far fewer hub rooms and connectors to dilute the pool. You know those two or three rooms in the black powder mine that appear like every single run? Yeah, they're connectors, which is why they appear all the sodding time like a stalker outside your bedroom window at night. Anyways, we've finished our room. Uh, not so fast past me. The latest update added four new buttons to this particular menu. Shuffle reinforcement positions. If this box is ticked, enemies on the second, third, fourth, etc. waves will be shuffled between the possible positions. Let's say we make a room that has four different enemies, one in each corner. With shuffle reinforcement positions on, they'll each still spawn in the corners, but which enemy spawns in which corner is random. Then there's this procedural section with buttons for walls, floors, and lighting. These buttons control the procedural generation of paintings, carpets, and lamps, respectively. Because of the way the game generates rooms, it's impossible to manually place stuff like paintings. The most you can do is turn them on or off completely. Now with that out of the way, let's go back to the past. Now all that remains is to apply those changes, crop it, and save it. Because we've made our room larger than an oncoming snowplow, we really need to crop it to prevent issues. Leaving a large amount of open canvas like this will cause a lot of trouble for the game later on. To trim our canvas, we simply just come up here into the edit menu and click trim canvas. <laughs> now it's nice and small. I mean, what did you expect? It ain't exactly rocket science. Now we can simply save our room to a destination of our choice. I'm going to choose my desktop because that's where I put everything, apparently. And uh, we can give it a fancy name too, like, um, Chungle Splurge. Yes, that sounds good. And there she is, Chungle Splurge in the wild. Now all we've got to do is add dear old Chungle Splurge to that custom room data folder I talked about in excruciating detail later. Early, I meant, uh, I meant earlier, I, I talked about it. I think my perception of the, the linear flowing of time is slowly unraveling. Now, whenever we load the hollow, this custom room will have a chance to be chosen as one of the rooms we need to fight through. If you make or download enough custom rooms, it's basically impossible to avoid them during play. But you might be asking, how am I meant to test my room? I want to make sure it's fair, I want to make sure it functions properly. You know? Am I meant to just load the hollow 700,000 times until it works? No. Kyle has your back. The custom rooms mod adds in a simple command called debug flow. Just plug it in, debug flow, debug flow enabled. Now what this does is it makes the game load all of your custom rooms, every single room in your custom room data folder in one long line. Now uh, we're on the um, keep because we just entered the gungeon, but I'm going to load the hollow so that we can have the full thematic effect. That is 100% not the command. I, I, lo load, load. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Here we are. Now all we need to do is go and find our room. Should be off of here. The uh, debug flow also puts these nice, neat little square rooms in between every custom room to space them out properly. Oh, oh, looks like one of our bullet king got replaced by a random nitra. And one of them got replaced by a random confirmed. Yeah, you, you can't currently change that. Uh, and a random enemy replacement like the confirmed is isn't part of rooms It just happens and it makes things kind of difficult also making this difficult is the stupid amount of lag and delay I'm getting because my computer Somehow will run really nicely on some things, but when you tell it to record its screen it just shits itself Boom first wave done now. We have to deal with our gummies, and I ran right into him I'm pressing buttons, why am I taking damage? It's a uh, uh, bugged gungeon mechanics, uh, lag, oh no, I can't possibly be at fault. 
It'd be a real, real shame to die on my own custom room. There we go. Now that room is entirely ready for floating skeletons. What? Go in the pit. Yay. I joined them. What the hell is that? That That's not how that's meant to work. I, we've created a money vortex. Please just put, uh, put him out of his misery. Okay then. Yeah, the debug flow is really useful. You'll find yourself crawling back to it time and time again, like a caterpillar to a tasty piece of spinach or me to a terrible simile. That's basically all there is to it. I'll run through a few real quick notes before ending this tutorial segment. These are kinda specific, but they could save you a lot of time. Secret rooms don't need to be set to a floor. Just leave them unset and they'll appear randomly on any floor. If you do set them to a floor, you'll then only be able to find them on the floor you set, essentially making a floor-locked secret room. You can't make bullet hell secret rooms. This thing is a random secret room pickup, like armor, blank, health, or a glass Guan stone, that sort of thing. When placing chests, you usually want to use these question mark chests. These are random quality chests, the same way chests in normal secret or chest rooms are random quality. It's rather unbalanced to have a guaranteed red chest in your chest room. You can't make custom shops, but you can make custom alternative merchant shops, like Gupton or Cursula. It's in the special category under Weird Shop. Shrine rooms ought to be placed in the special category under Unspecified Special. Some things may appear slightly different in-game to where they did in the editor as a simple consequence of the sprites being weird. You may need to finagle it around until it lines up nicely. And I think we're done here. That's basically all you need to know to make and play custom rooms. Sorry if I rambled on for a bit there, but I feel as though making this tutorial as comprehensive as possible is probably saving me or some other poor sap a lot of time down the road explaining things to a bunch of confused room creators. So have fun creating. Also, if you didn't know, Retromation is a Gungeon YouTuber and alleged Homo Sapien who's currently doing a Gungeon series using a ton of mods. Modded items, modded rooms, even entirely new modded floors. He's been using my room pack for a while now, and there's a rather large part of me, uh, I'd say like 95%, that cackles like a deranged gremlin whenever he shakes his fists at the sky and curses my evil rooms. <laughs> Here's a highlight reel. What the hell? Never named! Excuse me! This is, uh... Boy, this is a lot. Oh, come on! And we didn't even have to be there?! You're telling me we didn't even have to be there? I never thought I would breathe a sigh of relief to see an another normal uh, bullet hell room. We'll cool down here for a moment. Hello, how are you doing? Also bad? Good to know. What the hell? Is this trash? You're getting a one-way ticket to a de-installation. Never named. This is indeed you. Man. We can't be we can't be advertising other YouTubers on this channel. Uh, man, I guess we got another got another mod to purge. Okay, okay, okay. We, oh no. It's just a happy it's a happy face. Should be nice and happy, right? I deserve a freaking break. Look at this mess. Look at this mess we had to endure. Holy crap. Brilliant, isn't it? But before I leave you all to go and terrorize the world with lead maidens like the wonderful demon children I know and love, I unfortunately must be the bearer of bad news. Kyle, our beloved code man and ancient blood god, is retiring from the modding scene. He explained to me that with coding being his job, he's simply tired of doing it in his free time as well. It's a perfectly reasonable reason to step down, but, but I know that I personally will miss him. If the Gungeon modding community was an unmarked white van, Kyle wasn't the driver. He was the guy running ahead and building the road. I don't know what this means for the future of Kyle's projects, like the editor or who'll step up to take Kyle's place. Those are some pretty big boots to fill. I for one have hope in special API, but it's still too early to say. I'm gonna stop acting as though Kyle's literally dead now. He just retired from modding. He didn't get taken to a better place by Truck Coon. Also, big thanks to Sir Wow for doing the art for the opening skit, they are very talented. Now it's time for me to slink back into the shadows and work on bringing back my bones from atrophy. 
they're uh, getting kind of squishy. See ya!